Welcome to the OCI Grails QuickCast, bite-sized portions of Grails productivity tips to help maximize developer productivity with the framework. Grails QuickCasts are brought to you by OCI, the home of the core Grails development team and your source for professional support, project work, and training around the Grails framework. Grails QuickCasts are distributed in partnership with DZone, who help build knowledge and relationships to maximize your success. Hello, my name is Sergio Delamo. I am a member of the Grails OCI team. I wanted to talk to you about logging in a Grails 3 application. Uh, if you are still using Grails 2, in Grails 2 we used Log4EA for logging. In Grails 3 we have moved to Logback. By default, uh, when you create a uh, Grails 3 application, I have created a Grails 3.2.10 application, which is the latest stable release of Grails at the time of the quickcast. Uh, you get automatically a logbat.groovy uh, configuration file um, in the folder grace app uh, slash conf. Uh, I have a couple of uh, services, a controller and a domain class in my application. One of the things that the frameworks offer us uh, is when you have an artifact such as a controller or a service, uh, the framework automatically injects a log property for us so we can uh, call log.debug immediately without configuring anything. Uh, I have a log statements as well in the services that the controller uses. Uh, if we were to start this application, we will still not see anything. Uh, we will need to configure uh, loggers uh, for uh, the controllers and the services. Uh, let me uh, do that. So I'm going to say, OK, I want to log a race app controllers and a demo. I'm going to say I want to use the level debug. Uh, and I want to supply a list of appenders. In my case, it's going to be the standard output appender, which I, is uh, configured in the log configuration file, which is created by the framework, which is a console appender. I'm going to set a dbd to false. And I'm going to create the same statement for the service. Uh, this uh, uh, package prefix convention comes from the old days uh, of Grace where uh, we used to have even controllers without a package. So at that time, it makes sense to use uh, such a prefix. Um, I'm going to start the application. While the application starts, uh, let's talk briefly about ADBT. Uh, ADBT uh, is better uh, explained with uh, the logback uh, manual. So, in chapter two of the logback uh, manual, in the architecture chapter, uh, you will find a, a section about ADBT. Uh, basically, uh, this sentence uh, summarizes. Uh, it says the output of a log statement of a particular logger will go to all the appenders in that logger and its ancestors. Uh, check out the documentation. Uh, it's better explained with this example of the table uh, than me uh, talking. So, ADVT has its use cases. In, uh, in this screencast, we're going to set ADVT to false, but be sure to check it out in the documentation. Um, back to our application. Um, Another parameter that we can configure is the log level. Uh, we have several log levels of error, warn, info, and debug. When you set up debug, that means that the levels such as info, warn, and error will be outputted as well. So it's debug and upper levels. Uh, application has started. Let me open the application. Invoke the controller. Uh, we have in uh, our console output uh, the debug statement in the controller and two info statements for uh, each of the services. Uh, we have big changes in Grails 3.3. So this is how you will configure such uh, uh, loggers names in Grails 3.2 uh, or lower. Uh, in Grails 3.3, I have here uh, an application, uh, the same application with Grails 3.3. Zero, which is uh, currently milestone two. Uh, in my logback configuration, I will just have 
uh, the package name, I don't need to add the prefixes. So this will be for a uh, grace 3.3 or, or smaller or lower. Uh, in grace 3.3, we will use just the demo. Uh, we believe that this is a more uh, natural uh, logger name for uh, new users to the framework. Uh, if you are using the SLA4J annotation uh, in Grace Artifacts, you will need to use uh, such a logger name as well. Uh, so it basically uh, uh, sets uh, the same logger name uh, whether you are using SLA4J or not, uh, which is a nice feature as well. Uh, the only uh, capability that you uh, may lose is you could, for example, say something like this in a REST application where you were uh, logging um, with a debug level all your controllers. Uh, you will no longer be able to do that in a REST 3.3.x uh, automatically, uh, but you could, for example, put all your controllers in a package name. Uh, we believe uh, this change uh, makes uh, a lot of sense. Uh, it will make it uh, easier to grasp a uh, login for configuration for new users. Uh, and we hope you like it as well. Uh, let me go back to the sample application, the Grace 3.3.210. 3 to 10. I have a Groovy class which is uh, not a Grace Artifacts is a plain Groovy class. Uh, the easiest way to get a log property in a non-Grace artifact is to annotate your class with uh, the transform SLA4J. Uh, let me go to the documentation of the transform. So it says, this local transform has a login ability to your program using logpack login and every method call on an unbound variable named log will be mapped to the call to the logger. For this, a log field will be inserted into the class. So if you, are, uh, if you want to use uh, from a non-Grace artifact, uh, the transform SLA4J is uh, your best ally here. Um, if we wanted to log uh, from uh, to get the statement from such a class, you will need to add something like uh, demo.com info uh, that Mr. Prefix class is in uh, that package. If uh, we wanted, for example, uh, to uh, log everything in that uh, particular package but not in that class, we want to silence the login of the Mr. Prefixer class, we could do something like this. And we will use off here. So uh, this configuration, we will see uh, logs of other classes in the demo.com package, but we will not see any log statements in the Mr. Prefixer class. Uh, SLA4EA annotation has uh, another big advantage uh, which is a feature they call a uh, parameterized login, uh, which uh, boosts login performance uh, for disabled login statements. Um, this is better explained with an example. So let's say you had here an ex a statement such as uh, prefixing at, and we are going to have two parameters. One is going to be the string, and the other is going to be the date. Um, it's a year, 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 month, day, hour, minute. So let's say we don't want to pay the penalty cost of uh, instantiating a date, object, and formatting uh, when we are not uh, logging uh, with level info. So what uh, SLA4J is going to do for us is basically going to wrap this call into such a code. So if the log level info is not enabled, we are not going to instantiate uh, this parameter. So this is a nice uh, SLA for EA benefit, uh, which will improve the performance of your application. Uh, if you are using heavily uh, parameters in your log statements uh, and you don't want to uh, pay the cost of instantiating those parameters, um, when the log level uh, is not uh, the one in the statement, uh, then SLA4J comes to the rescue.
another thing I wanted to talk to you is about uh, configuring new appenders. Uh, by default, we have the standard output appender here, uh, which is a console appender configured uh, for us. Um, we have a nice blog post in the OCI Grace team blog, uh, which is named Configuring Rolling uh, Login with Logback. Uh, what's rolling login? Uh, the first sentence here uh, defines it better. So, log files are rolled over and scheduled and archived at a certain point. So, when you go into production, you probably don't want to log to the console or to, to talk at a, a standard uh, Catalina.out. You probably want to have a, a more sophisticated uh, rolling uh, logging system where you, for example, rock, roll, log every day to a one file and that file is uh, 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 supply changed by another file when a particular uh, size of the file is rich or uh, when the history of the of the of the days of the file is rich uh, it's really easy to configure in such an appender with a uh, log pack uh, we have an example here in the block so i'm going to copy uh, this appender configuration I'm gonna put it here in my project. Uh, I'm gonna set the home dir. Uh, basically, what we want to do is we want to log uh, to a file instead of to the console. I'm gonna create a folder here in the root of my project. So I'm gonna set, I want to place the logs here. So the logs are gonna be in home directory logs and then this file name pattern will basically create a login file per minute. Uh, in a production, you probably don't want a log file per minute, you probably want something like a, a log per month or a log per day, depending on your uh, traffic. Um, check out the logback documentation uh, for these options, I really uh, explained there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say okay uh, instead of logging to the standard output let's log to the rolling appender and I'm gonna uh, start the application again. So what I expect now is I expect to see logs here under the logs folder. So there is like a log per minute. If I execute my endpoint now. I will see uh, log statements coming to that file. Let me go back to the project. And there you go. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you before I forget is another uh, benefit of using SLA4EA is for is uh, helping the ID. For example. Uh, here IntelliJ is complaining, uh, even though uh, you have seen that the, this is uh, compiling and it's working. Uh, we executed the application before and we saw the login statement coming uh, nicely. Uh, if we annotated this with SLA4J, uh, the ID will understand uh, better and we will no longer have that error. Indeed, in previous versions of Grace, uh, I have, for example, the same application here written with Grace 3.1.0. Uh, this will not even compile. Uh, so, as you have seen, SLA4EA has uh, several benefits. Uh, there are uh, several plugins uh, quite used in the ecosystem, such as the Spring Security Core plugin or the Spring Security REST plugin, which use SLA4EA heavily. I personally use a, a lot of SLA4EA, and I would recommend you to use. SLA4J, just remember if you use the transformation, you will need to uh, use the uh, package name here uh, instead of the, the Grace uh, app controllers uh, prefix. Uh, in Grace 3.3, uh, this is gone, uh, so you will not need to remember anything, and you will basically go with the package uh, for the lower name. Um, yeah, as you have seen, this is not compiling in, in previous versions of Grace. Uh, so it will be common to see such a statement in in uh, a version of Grace such as uh, Grace 3.1.0. Uh, 
uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you uh, was about the external configuration. Uh, by default, you have the lockback.groovy configuration file here inside the Glitch application conf. Uh, if I want to move it uh, outside of the project and uh, I want to have an external file, I can do that. I will move the external conf the configuration file to uh, the uh, root of my project. So I have it. Uh, let me see if I move it correctly. I moved the completely conf folder. Let me move the conf folder back to its placement. Uh, what I want to move is just the uh, logback.ruby file. So that's better. Uh, so we have it here. Uh, I have three options for using this external configuration file. Um, so one option is to edit application.jml and use uh, the setting login config and then I can say something like and uh, this is in let me see my folder this will be one option uh, another option will be to start the application uh, using something like uh, using a system property so something like this you can use uh, the system property login.config supply where do you have the external configuration client right boot run and the latest option will be uh, you could define Let me copy here or easier. So you could define a, um, a environment variable. You could say something like login config Then I could start the application with the boot run and the app will pick this external configuration file thanks to this uh, environment variable. Um, when you are using an external configuration file, it is really useful to use the scan uh, feature as well. Uh, if you uh, use uh, something like this, uh, your uh, application will check periodically for changes in the configuration file. Uh, so that you can uh, tune up or tune down uh, the levels uh, of the login uh, depending on your requirements. Uh, check out the logback configuration for a scan. Uh, you can configure, for example, the if you want your file to be scanned every minute or every 10 minutes or every hour. Um, that's everything I wanted to tell you. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck with your Glare 3 development. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of the OCI Grails QuickCast. For more information on how OCI can help you with Grails or any of these other practice areas, visit OCIweb.com or contact us at info at OCIweb.com. Follow our Twitter accounts at Object Computing and at Grails Framework. Also, read regular updates on the OCI Grails team blog at grailsblog.ociweb.com.